Hello, everybody, and welcome to U.S. Farm Report. On today's show, our special guest is Robert Mankey, national head of the feeder program for the National Farmers Organization. Bob, it's a pleasure to have you on our show. Thank you, Bill. Now, like uh, most of the other executives I've met here at uh, National Headquarters of NFO in Corning, Iowa, you too have a farm background, do you not? Oh, yes, sir. I have a farm in Wisconsin, and after I started spending more time with the NFO, I bought a, another small farm in Iowa, mm -hmm. and I have beef cattle on that farm. Bob, why did NFO get into feeder cattle marketing? Well, first of all, we noticed some very odd things happening last year. There was great price variations in feeder cattle. To give you an example, the price of choice four to 450 pound feeder steer calves would vary as much as four to five dollars a hundred. We also found one other thing out while we were running into this situation, that where the low price feeders were, they also had the cheap dressed beef. So we thought there was a correlation between the cheap feeders and the uh, cheap beef. So in the area where we originally got started, which was the Pacific North, Northwest, we moved some, uh, about 3,000 head of feeder cattle out of that area. Mm -hmm. And we moved them back to the Midwest at the higher prices we did not affect any of the feeders in this area because they just paid the going market price. But the situation that we run into there that was real important is that a very large percentage, in some reports will say 70% of the fat cattle are under contract. So they had a choice of either driving the feeder price down to make a market selling their beef cheap or paying uh, the ranchers organizing and putting pressure on this end for them to raise the feeder price. So with the advent, and this is one thing that I'm sure would be interesting to you, Bill, they say that 1% of the feedlots now control 60% of the fat cattle. And with this great a percentage of uh, control of the fat cattle in such a few hands, it becomes just more important that we organize on the products that are supplying these feedlots. Mm -hmm. And the one truism that's real important is that any time that you have a low-priced area, if given time, we'll tear down the whole price structure over the United States. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to pick these low-priced areas out and bring them up to protect both the feeder and the rancher at this point. Now. In your department, Bob, here at National Headquarters, obviously you have made some very careful studies of the feeder cattle situation. I'm sure that we have. And here's a map showing in the red the fed cattle marketings for 1968, the latest figures from USDA, and the beef cow numbers in 1968 with the zeros admitted. Now there's omitted. There's one thing that we've got to remember. Each one of these on the beef cow numbers would represent about 90% of the feeder cattle available in that area because that's about the livability that uh, would be a national average. Some places higher, some places lower. But again, <coughs> let's look at this situation. In the state of Washington, for all practical purposes, they would feed out all the cattle that they've got. Then you've got Idaho, and they've got a few extra. But here is where we get down into the real, uh, well, changes and uh, movements of feeder cattle. You've got California that's going to need approximately 1,200,000 head of feeder cattle. And here's one that is changing just this year. Texas, which is the largest cow state, is going to become a net importer rather than an exporter. So here's where one of the changes are coming in. Now, you can use Nebraska here. They're going to need about uh, two and a half million head of cattle. Now, we have these cattle in this area to move down into Nebraska, and Kansas, for all practical purposes, will feed out all they have. But then, these cattle can come, out, come into the state of Nebraska. 
You've got the largest cattle feeding state here, Iowa, that's going to need three million head of cattle. And the important part of this whole uh, program is that we understand where the last uncommitted supply of cattle is. And this is down in, starting at Louisiana and Arkansas, up over Kentucky and Tennessee. And uh, this is where the last free supply of cattle is left in the United mm -hmm. States. So if a uh, feeder price and a cattle price, fat cattle price, is to be maintained, it is important that we be in all areas. You can see by the size that Florida is right at the present time almost as important as mm -hmm. California. So it is necessary that we span this much area in order to control the marketing. Bob, how can NFO raise the feeder cattle price? Well, it's really very simple. One of the truisms of collective bargaining is that you either accept the local market price or you have an alternative. And NFO is offering that alternative. Again, if you have an area with a soft market and the feeders in a certain area go down and get uh, cheaper cattle, and you get one load of cheaper cattle into that area, it has a depressing effect on that market. Now what we do, we mainly price our feeder cattle on the local market price. And with the efficiency of our program, the people that are opposing our efforts and the people that have been in business uh, in the past have to pay and say that both uh, groups of cattle or, or people are moving cattle out at 36 cents. With our efficiency, these other people will have to pay 36 and a half cents. So that at this point, we tend to have a competition in the market. And if the market goes up, this will affect the local market price. And we also have the same rules applying to both the independent feeder and the smaller feeder and the corporate feedlot. Mm -hmm. And this will bring uh, efficiency back to the smaller feeder. We have uh, with us today two young men, uh, leaders in NFO, uh, from two widely scattered points in the country. Wouldn't you agree, Bob? They're quite a ways apart. Yes, they are. And I think it's time we introduce them to our viewers. On uh, Bob's left is Carl Gribbins, who comes from Kentucky. Carl, it's a pleasure to welcome you to our show. I'm glad to be here. And uh, on Carl's left is Devon Woodland from central Idaho. These fellows are ranchers. They're NFO leaders in their area. In fact, uh, we're fortunate to have them here attending a conference at National NFO Headquarters uh, in Corning, Iowa. Uh, fellas, what effect did the program Bob's been talking about have in your areas where cattle have been moved out? Carl, what about your area? Well, it's had a good effect for both the feeder calf producer and also the cattle feeder. For one thing, it's eliminated the speculator and the commission man and the middleman's profit that he's been taking off both the producer and the feeder. And it also assures the, the producer of a fair and better price. Our feeder calf prices are up quite a bit what they was last year. Mm -hmm. And it also assures the feeder of ranch fresh cattle. And, it, and these regular feeder calf sales, uh, calves sometimes spend two to three days in a yard and in trucking, while calves that go through the NFO program are off the farm one morning and on feed that night. Mm -hmm. So it's been a big benefit for both the producer and the feeder. Yes. And of course, this is what we're interested in, benef benefiting both parties involved Absolutely. in this thing. Devon, what effect has the program had in your area? Without question, Bill, the most obvious thing is that the collective bargaining program does work. And this movement of, movement of cattle has been highly successful. Uh, we know that the uh, moving the cattle out of uh, these low-priced areas into a high-priced area has been effective. We have noticed a price increase advantage as we have done this, nearly without exception to our members. And also the industry has become more competitive in their bidding in the areas where the supply has been shortened. The big feeders in our area know that if we're capable of moving out perhaps 3,000 head of feeder calves, that we're also capable of moving out uh, 30,000. Mm -hmm. And this is a concern to them. Well, in your opinion, what's the uh, intention of your area for the future? Moving out more cattle? Oh, yes, I'm sure. Uh, this is uh, 
in the process right now, Bill. Yeah. Uh, we're blocking these calves together, uh, and because of volume, we're going to be able to merit a premium for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is what the ranchers are doing, and of course, we're encouraging uh, more participation in the program. And as they become more educated in this, why uh, the participation is going to increase. Yes. Carl, how about Kentucky? What are the intentions there? Moving them out? Yes, sir. We've had uh, already five sales that average around 700 calves per sale, and we've got, uh, we're planning on about four or five more sales per month on into the fall and early part of the winter. Uh -huh. Well, now, can you fellas uh, think of any more benefits to the feeder from this program? You've mentioned some. Uh, what are some of the other benefits? Can you think of any right offhand? Well, the biggest benefit, I would think, would be the farm fresh cattle that yes. he's receiving. They don't get a truckload of sick and weakened cattle that have stood around a yard and truck for a long right. time. Right, because of the efficiency of handling, because of the shortening of the time. That's right, and also by cutting out some of the middlemen, he also saves some money there, right. making money on both ends of us. Mm -hmm. Carl, it's uh, been a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you. It's been a pleasure uh, being here. Very good luck to you and uh, the other fine NFO members in Kentucky. Thank you. And the same to you, Devon. Uh, my and uh, say hello to everybody out in Idaho for me. Yes, I'll do. Thank you very much. How does the NFO program protect the feeder? We have a very important graph here, Bill, that I think spells it out as clear as anything. Back in the year 1967, we slaughtered 33,868,600 head of cattle, but we had an average price of 25.22. In the year 1968, we slaughtered 35,051,800 head, and here we see the price going up to reach a point of 27.90. In January 1969, we slaughtered 3,129,000. 200 head, and that would put the figure well over the 36 million mark, and the price was going up. Mm -hmm. And this is where the three letters, NFO, comes very important. This is group action working together. Now, the rancher and the feeder have to work together, and I know that sometimes statements have been made that feeder cattle prices are too high. But this is just a... Uh, 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 statement made in order to bring disunity between the two parties. Now, the corporate feedlots normally operate on a, oh, a small profit, or you're normally a five to seven dollar profit, and they will contract their fat cattle. And if they do, this puts a ceiling on the fat cattle market. Now, if we can raise the, the uh, cost, not really raise the cost, but uh, have fair prices, for the factors that go into their business, then we can have a level of beef prices that are fair over the whole nation. Mm -hmm. Tell me this, uh, Bob, who does the NFO supply feeder cattle to? We supply, first of all, to the NFO member feeders, the independent feedlots, and of course some of them will go into the corporate feedlots. Now, what are the benefits to the feeder? Well, the benefits are quite numerous, and some of them are worth uh, a lot of money. One of them is we have ranch fresh cattle. We've had cattle in our gathering points that from the time that they left the ranch until the time that they were on trucks into the feedlots with a time lapse of three hours. We have identity maintained. Normally, and I would say in a large percentage of the cases, the feeder will know who he got the cattle from. He will know the price that the rancher was paid. How are the feeder cattle put together, Bob? Well, we believe the feasible number of cattle put together in any one gathering point for a day is 800 head. This is when we can uh, get the best sort, mm -hmm. both for weight and quality. And we go and operate the points where the cattle are, close to the source of the cattle. We have an assignee that handles a transaction between the rancher and the feeder. And any time that NFO members have put 800 together, we need 10 days from that point on, and then we can have the sale of these cattle consummated. How are orders handled from people wanting feeder cattle? We have an NFO feeder order for NFO members, and they can fill this out as a tentative order. And 
This is sent in here to the office and they might fill it out a month in advance. Might fill it out two weeks in advance and some of them have been filled out a lot longer. And when this time that they normally would want cattle, the assignee would contact them, stating the price, where the cattle would be delivered from so they'd know the freight rate. So they would know the total cost delivered to the feedlot. At that time, they have the right of acceptance or rejection. Mm -hmm. Bob, why does the NFO have something to offer that no other organization has at this time? Many of the other organizations have been based on county lines, state lines, area lines. We know that when it comes to marketing, that the national scope of marketing is very important that the cattle, uh, or that the rancher in the southeast affects the prices of the cattle rancher in other areas. We have to have people over the whole United States working together, and it takes a national organization to do that. And we believe that we have something to offer that no other organization has, and all we're asking for is a fair price. You have just heard how the NFO cattle feeder program has affected NFO members advantageously in the states of Idaho and Kentucky. Now we're going to talk to two cattle feeders, NFO members in the state of Nebraska to get their reactions to the NFO cattle feeder program. We're speaking to you at this time from the farm of Vinny and Richard Maduna near Colon, Nebraska. This is a father and son farming operation, and it is our pleasure to welcome to U.S. Farm Report the son half of this team, Dick Maduna. Dick, it's nice to have you on our show. Oh, I'm glad you could come out. Where's your dad today, Dick? Uh, he's a member of the Federal Land Bank Board, and he's uh, attending a meeting in Lincoln today. Well, then we're going to ask you to do all the work, okay? Okay. Now, Dick and his father, Vinny, farm 900 acres here. They um, also feed out about 1,000 head of cattle per year. Now, Dick, with this kind of operation, you must have some challenges in terms of uh, storing feed. How do you accomplish that? Well, we've uh, got two 24 by 50 cement upright silos, and we fill these a couple times, and then we also, for additional storage, have a above the ground silo that if we uh, try and have fed up before winter sets in. Then we have uh, quite a bit of dry grain storage. We uh, store, uh, collect government storage, and uh, then we buy back this corn as we need it for feed. Well now, in order to feed out 900 head of cattle and farm, or rather 1,000 head of cattle and farm 900 acres, uh, you must have a terrific investment in equipment. Well, the equipment, uh, I suppose it runs around $100,000, uh, the tractors and dryer, combine, and so forth. What sort of uh, overall investment do you feel that you and your father have here, Dick? Oh, with the land and everything, uh, we own and rent, and it must be around a million dollars. Now, you and your father have been NFO members from almost the very beginning, dating back to when, about 1955? About 55, when uh, NFO came into this area. Uh huh. What is your source of uh, feeder cattle? Well, we've uh, been getting uh, cattle from uh, uh, NFO uh, ranchers and uh, s since they've uh, gotten their feeder program started. And uh, what do you feel, Dick, have been the advantages to you, a cattle feeder, uh, as a result of the NFO feeder cattle program? Well, we like to get our cattle right from the rancher. You don't get uh, as much disease. And, and uh, you know what kind of cattle you're getting, and uh, you get them the way you want them. They're in good shape when you get them. Well, now, it's a two-way street, as uh, Mr. Mankey has just pointed out in uh, an earlier interview in our show. The NFO feeder cattle program helps not only the cattle feeder, like yourself, but also the NFO rancher. Can you speak for the rancher? What do you think some of the advantages are for him? Well, I know they're uh, real pleased to uh, uh, buy them. They know where they go, and they, they can get a report on uh, what the cattle do when they get finished out. And I uh, think they come out ahead, too. Well, would you agree, then, that uh, the NFO feeder cattle program keeps 
this particular aspect of farming in the hands of NFO members where they can bargain together and sell together. Right. The cattle are all the way right from the cow to the packing house are in NFO control, and uh, it will keep the family farmers and ranchers going. Well, now, the family farm is something that is threatened, and do you feel that the NFO program is helping here? I think so. It uh, gives us a, a little leverage, and uh, you know, as long as you stay efficient, then we'll be able to compete. Let's talk about the market. Uh, has there been, in your opinion, as a result of this program, more stability in the market? Well, the cattle market, uh, uh, say the past six months, has been the steadiest it's ever been, and I attribute this mostly to uh, NFO uh, having control of the large part of the production. Uh huh. Now, what about yourself? Uh, in the last year, for example, how have the prices you've received for your feeder cattle compared to the prices being paid, uh, let's say, at the Omaha Terminal? Well, when they're finished and we sell them, then we figure we're getting about a dollar over Omaha top. A dollar over Omaha per top. Per hundredweight, yeah. You're married, Dick, are you not? Right. Children? I've got a boy. He's going to be two. Well, Dick, we want to thank you very much for your hospitality today. It's been a pleasure to have you on U.S. Farm Report. Oh, well, glad you could come out. And please tell your father that we're sorry we missed him. Well, I bet he wishes he could have been here, too. We've been visiting today with uh, Dick Maduna, who, along with his father, Vinny, operate 900 acres here near Colon, Nebraska, and feed out 1,000 cattle per year. Now, we're going over to meet another NFO member and cattle feeder from this area, Mr. Stanley Cavan. Stanley, how you doing? I'm awful busy, by golly. You got a lot of silage to cut and... Uh... And a lot of other work to do. I know you do, come. and I appreciate your taking time out in what I know is a busy schedule for you to say hello to us and uh, to talk with us on U.S. Farm Report. Now, you're an NFO member and a cattle feeder, and uh, you've lived neighbors to Dick here and his father for quite a long while, haven't you? That's right. Yeah. And I suppose, even though there are a number of miles separating you, that... Uh, since your interests uh, have a lot of common ground, that you fellas get together every now and then for a visit, don't you? That's right. Generally, in that NFO meeting, we uh, visit back and forth how yeah. our cattle are doing and uh, other things also. How uh, many head of cattle do you run here, uh, Stanley? Oh, we generally run uh, 150 head annually. And how many acres do you farm? 480. Now, Stanley, uh, what is your routine with these cattle uh, we're seeing behind us here? How long ago did you receive these cattle? These cattle came in uh, Friday morning, uh, and we unloaded them, gave them a good drink of water. They'd been on the truck for 12, 13 hours, gave them a good drink of water, put some medication in the water, and, and we immediately put them on prairie hay. And there's some chopped hay in the barn there that they were, had access to, and they just went to work. and. They really made hogs of themselves, really. They started eating and yes. drinking water, yes. and yes. Uh, how soon are you going to turn them out of here? Well, uh, within a day or so, just as soon as I feel that they're, uh, they're settled down and, yeah. and uh, ready to go out in the pasture. How many days uh, do you figure you'll keep these cattle here, Stanley, before you, you turn them to market? Well, I don't feel I want to keep them much longer than 120 days. Uh -huh. These bigger ones... I'll probably move quicker than that, but yeah. uh, the rest of them, I feel that they should be gone by 120 days. Well, now, how many uh, <laughs> years have you been a member of NFO, Stanley? Well, I joined in 64, that makes make it five years. Five-year member. And uh, how long have you participated in NFO's cattle feeder program? Well, since it started, uh, I think I was probably the first member in Saunders County that uh, had cattle shipped in out of uh, Colorado. Uh -huh. Now, I mentioned at the outset that uh, you, uh, like Dick and his father, are a Nebraska cattle feeder. Uh, what is your mailing address here? Valparaiso. Valparaiso, Nebraska. Right, right. Uh, there's an interesting story, I think, uh, about your farm, and uh, I'd like for you to tell our viewers about it. Uh, you're the third generation of Cavan on this farm, aren't you? That's right. Your mother and father came over here from Czechoslovakia, did they not? Well, no. my 
grandfather, uh, my two grandfathers. Gra yes, that, that my generation. My two grandfathers came over from Czechoslovakia. Uh -huh. Where, what part of Czechoslovakia did they come well, from? Well, uh, my grandfather from my father's side uh, was uh, from Bohemia, and my grandfather from my mother's side was from Moravia. Uh -huh. When was this, do you know? Oh, gosh. Uh, my grandfather from my mother's side, I think he was 12 years old when he came, and that must have been, uh, let's see, he's been dead since 42. Three, no, uh, excuse me, 56. Uh, He's been dead since 56 or 57. I think it's 57. Mm -hmm. And he was 91 when uh, he died, so it's a good many years ago. Well, did, uh, did he as a young adult come here and acquire this land? Well, uh, uh, he came here as an ad a young adult, yes. He, uh, this, his family settled at uh, Morris Bluff in Linwood. And then he broke off from the rest of his family. Well, actually, he and his brother mm -hmm. moved down into this country, and they bought land here from the railroad. Then you uh, were born and uh, raised right here on this farm. Yes, I was, and so was my dad before me. Yeah. How many children do you have, Stanley? Five. Five children. How old are they? Well, the oldest is uh, 22, and the youngest is 12. Incidentally, I'm expecting uh, my second boy to come home from the... Uh, come home on leave from the Navy today. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, My oldest be boy a... went up to get him, and and uh, so I'm kind of expecting him most any time well, that'll if be I take happy, out of here. <laughs> happy reunion. How long has he been gone? Uh, he's been gone since the first uh, 20th of January, a uh, year ago, last tw uh, well, 20th of January. I know how happy you'll be to see him and him to see all of his family. Yes, well, of course, he's been home a couple of times on yeah. leave, but... Uh, uh, it's going to be nice to see him. He's been going to school. He's been going away three months now since yeah. he was home last. Stanley, let's get back to NFO for just a moment <clears throat> and talk about uh, the prices uh, since the NFO cattle feeder program has gone into effect that you've received uh, on contracts and how they might compare with market prices like prices you'd receive at the Omaha terminal. Well, um... I feel that we've had a definite advantage under our contracts, and the contracts that are being ratified or had been ratified just recently are, are uh, so much better than the ones we've had before. You know, we're mm -hmm. just working it up all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, we like to think, of course, that uh, NFO's overall program is going a long way toward saving the, the family farm, and I would presume that you would agree to that. That's right, that's right. Stanley, it's been a pleasure talking with you. And again, we thank you for allowing us to drop by today and for your appearance on U.S. Farm Report. Lots of good luck to you, and uh, say hello to that son of yours returning from the Navy. Okay, thank you. Thank you.